So it's been around one year since the release of Need for Speed 2015, arguably one of the most eagerly awaited racing titles of recent years. Now Need for Speed has been around for a long long time, passing through various generations of console, but perhaps its most golden era was the run of games starting with the underground titles 1 and 2, then following those two we had Carbon and Most Wanted, of which both stretched the boundaries and set new standards for open world racers. After this though, things seemed to go downhill as the games released after that purple patch failed to capture the hearts and mind of the franchise's core audience, with titles including Undercover, where you spent the whole game as a cop, which irritated me because I don't want to be a cop, I want to antagonise the cops. We also had Pro Street, which completely removed the open world element, the very thing that made the underground slash most wanted slash carbon era so great. Then they gave us Shift, which focused more on circuits and GT cars and was a naff attempt at making a simulation. I mean, don't get me wrong, the cars, the tracks actually looked great, but the game was bland and had about as much charisma as a dead donkey playing bingo on Thursday night. Look. There are plenty more examples I can give, but I think I've made my point. Quite simply, somewhere along the line the game lost its identity and I felt it were as if they tried to make Need for Speed a sort of jack of all trades and it became a master of nothing. For long time followers of the franchise, Need for Speed 2015 was heralded as a return to form with the game based around the underground racing scene again. Now what I want to do is discuss what I feel went well in 2015 and what I feel they need to fix or bring for Need for Speed 2017, if it gets announced of course. So for the sake of time I've decided to keep things nice and short and do 5 good and 5 bad. So starting off with the good, number 1. The overall feel, the environments. When taking your car out of the garage, the street felt abandoned, there were no pedestrians walking around, it was late night going into early morning, it was the perfect setting for what underground street racing should be, what it's all about. I really enjoyed cruising up to a random group of people, honking the horn and then doing some synchronised drifting around the twisty bit of roads or just meeting up on long strips and hitting a quarter mile drag race. It just felt like I was living in my own version of the early Fast and Furious movies and that's exactly how I wanted the game to be. Number 2. Customization. I feel the rap editor was quite simply brilliant. Now for those of you who don't know, I've been doing YouTube for a year now and started with my own Need for Speed build and test series, focusing on custom designs I had created all by myself using the rap editor. And even though I was absolutely useless and rubbish at art back in school, I was still able to put together some pretty decent designs as you can see by the images on screen right now. I remember there were nights I would switch the game on and spend the whole session in my garage just designing and coming up with new themes, styles and concepts. Now in the lead up to the game I never saw this as something that would impress me much as I mentioned I'm not good with the art. But I must say I was pleasantly surprised and thoroughly enjoyed this element of the game and it was great to see just how well the Need for Speed community, which is you guys, acted towards that very same element as there were so many pictures going around on social media of different people creating different designs. Everybody had the chance to be an artist basically and it was great because what's a car without character eh? Number 3 free DLC for 6 months. When Ghost announced that all DLC packs post launch would be totally free, it made a lot of people including myself sit up and take notice. Things like manual transmission, prestige mode, rap editor updates, extra cars and much more. We got it all with no season pass required. To me, this is how all developers should act, it's a great example to follow. Kudos to you guys over there at Ghost, kudos, thank you for that. The Crew Forza Drive Club. It doesn't matter what you throw at it, Need for Speed beats all comers when it comes to those harmonic notes played by each engine assembly. From the revving and the backfiring to the spooling of the turbos and the crackles from the override. The folks over at Ghost have given us an engine soundstage which exceeds anything that has come before or after. It's true Horizon 3 is outstanding but Need for Speed 2015 really is the top dog in this area. And last but not least, visually. 
Regardless of what console or platform you play on, this game looks visually impressive across the board. From the dynamic lighting to the ripples of raindrops falling off the glass, not to mention the car models, in my mind, at the time of its release, it was second only to Drive Club in terms of its graphical fidelity. Now, obviously, Forza Horizon 3 has come along, but the, that doesn't matter because once you load Need for Speed 2015 up on a decent PC setup, you will still get a warm, fuzzy, somewhat comforting feeling on the insides of your jeans. Okay, so those are all the good points. Now to move on to the bad, the ugly, and the downright ridiculous. Starting off with the vehicle list. The crew, 73, with most being highly customizable. Forza Horizon 3, 350. Need for Speed 2015, 53. There is no hiding and no getting away from the fact that compared to its rivals, that list is nothing short of, well, it, it's pathetic. Even with the cars added as DLC post-launch, the list of cars available is unacceptable. What makes this worse is that rather than focusing on various vehicle types like SUVs, bikes, monster trucks and track day specials, they chose to focus on cars only. Now, there's a fair argument to say that their job was far easier than that of Ivory Tower, makers of The Crew, or Playground Games, developers of Forza Horizon 3, as with a smaller car list, there are less physics engines to work out, less research to be done, and less handling models to design, less styling, less rendering, and less legalities and permissions to sign off and get approved from each manufacturer. Now, I'm not saying we need bikes or trucks in Need for Speed, but even if you focus on just cars alone and compare it to the titles mentioned above, the fact is there is a huge shortage of important classes, such as Classic Muscle, and where are all the hot hatches? It's just not good enough. Now, this brings me on nicely and conveniently on to the next point I want to discuss, customization. No, this isn't a mistake. I did mention it earlier as one of the things that were good. But this time, I'm talking about mods, specifically aftermarket parts. Now, one of the key selling points they focused on in the lead up to the game was the ability to customize our cars and make them look and feel the way we want. Names like Rocket Bunny and Liberty Walk were even drafted in to give us extra body kits along with lights, hoods, trunks, wings, and other parts. This is all very well and good for some of the tuners and the JDMs, but the problem is there are just too many cars that you have hardly any parts for. Don't give me an exotic if I can't make it look even more exotic. And don't use customizable parts as one of your key selling points if a large portion of the car list is unmodifiable. That's a new word in case it's a word that doesn't exist. And do not tell us about how long it takes to mold and sculpt each part in the design studios because the crew were able to do it and they have an even bigger and more expansive car list meaning their task was even harder it doesn't matter how you chop it up there could be no argument it was a pants effort and requires a lot of improvement for the next installment now what i want to talk about next is the storyline let's just make it clear i like the fact they try to do something different I like the idea of incorporating icons in the racing scene like Nakai San and Ken Block and others into the game. I felt this was really creative. But what I didn't like was the execution of the idea. It's as if they tried too hard on the whole social networking new age youth thing and it came across as cheesy, patronizing and corny at times. A good storyline is one with substance, one that is purpose driven with a meaningful endpoint. There has to be a standout protagonist or antagonist. Need for Speed 2015 unfortunately had neither. I mean, it's a rule breaking underground racer. I should be smuggling shipments of drugs across borders with tight deadlines. I should be facing bosses in head to head drag races where the winner takes the money, the girl and the car. Why can't I have missions where me and three of my friends work together for a gangster kingpin? Where we have to hijack a lorry with all four of us using modified all black Mitsubishi Evos and surrounding it in formation before beating the dog shit out of the driver. But no. What you gave me, or us, was annoying fist pumping with endless amounts of energy drinks being consumed. A ghost. If you're watching this, please 
hire me as part of your creative development team. It will be a good investment, okay? Point number four, rubber banding. Now, even saying those two words have started to get me hot already. Honestly, the infuriation, the rage, the blood mist red anger that descends when you've been on the edge of your seat driving the race of your life only to find the AI conveniently closing in on you regardless of the fact that you're sitting on 1000 horsepower and a tank full of nitrous oxide. It can make someone, me perhaps, break their controller. In fact, it did make me break my controller. I broke two of them. It's an arcade racer and you want to keep it as thrilling as possible. I get it. But the aggressiveness of the rubber banding is something I'm just not willing to go through again. And I mean that. Last but not least, post-launch support. It was great giving us free DLC for six months, but all that good work was undone when you stopped supplying new content after this period. Now, I'm no expert, but having studied games development at university, I understand that games work on cycles. So take FIFA or Madden or NBA 2K as examples. These games have yearly release cycles, with each release coming 12 or so months after the previous one. So it stands to reason that at some point during the 12 month life cycle of FIFA 15, which was last year's title, from the day it was sold to the public, the developers, EA, would have made the decision to end further development and feature add-ons, maybe six to nine months after launch, so that they could focus on getting FIFA 16 ready on time. Now this makes sense and is totally acceptable when you have a yearly release cycle as the deadlines are really, really tight. The problem here is that Ghost announced very early that the Need for Speed franchise would move to a two year release cycle. We're talking around 24 months before we get another dosage of adrenaline. That's fine, I can live with that. But what I can't live with is only six months of additional content. I would actually rather pay 15 or 20 pounds for a solid 12 to 18 months worth of DLC because that is what keeps me coming back to play. The last Need for Speed video I made was ages ago and it's because I find the game bloody boring. It's gone stale, so please, Give us a longer time period of additional content Ghost Games. Thank you. Thus concluding my summary of the good, the bad and suggested improvements for a possible 2017 NFS release. Now I want to take the time out to say a huge thank you to all the members of my Google Plus community who gave me a few suggestions as to what topics to discuss in this video. If you like cars, if you play any type of car related game, then subscribe, hit the like button and then join the community today. What are you waiting for? Now, do it! Do it! Details will be in the description box. If you're new around here, I wish you a born welcome and until next time, take care and drive dangerously.